Hey guys, what is up? John here from FlyAtMyGalva.com. Flying around New York City today here with Steph, and we are going to be cruising down the Hudson River, down the Hudson River Exclusion, that VFR corridor with that special flight rules area, and telling you guys all about how to navigate it and what the rules are that pertain to flying down the corridor. All right, so today we're going to be starting our tour of the New York skyline right around the Tappan Zee Bridge on the north end of the Hudson here, just north of the city. We are have six required reporting points we really need to pay attention to and make sure we announce when we're passing those mandatory reporting points on 2305. That is the current CTAP for use in the area. That is the appropriate CTAP to use. And what we want to be telling people is our aircraft type, the current position, the direction we're going, and our altitude. So nice, short, sweet, simple communications. We're going to be going around 1,100 feet, about 1,000 to 1,100 feet, staying underneath the Bravo, staying underneath 1,300, and not going below 1,000 feet because we don't have any intention to land anywhere in the area. So if we're not transiting to or from any of these airports in the area, then we're going to be going ahead and simply staying above 1,000 feet the whole time. So I've bumped 1,100. We'll try to hold that altitude as we cruise down the river. This is America. We drive on the right side of the road. We are going to be driving on the right side of the river, heading southbound. We will be on the western side. Heading northbound, we will be on the east Eastern side. Uh, Alright, so the aircraft type, this is a Bearhawk aircraft, but we're going to make this simple. It's going to be a Red Super Cup today because not a lot of people know what a Bearhawk is. You say Red Super Cup, that immediately invokes the image of a high wing aircraft, tailwheel aircraft, with the gear hanging down the front, the little tiny wheel in the back. So that's the call sign we're going to be using today. Just for safety's sake, to communicate a little bit better with all the other pilots in the area. Red Super Cup, Alpine Tower, southbound 1100. All right, come on up on our next VFR checkpoint here. Same deal, right? This is going to be the George Washington Bridge. We are southbound on the western side of the river. Don't have to say on the west side. We just have to say that we are southbound. It's going to be the Red Super Cub, George Washington Bridge, southbound, 1,100. Now, it's probably a good time to talk about safety equipment here. We do, we can't quite see them. We have these little PFDs around our waist. Not the best things, but if we do go in the water, they are manual play PFDs. So at least we won't have too hard of a time floating in, uh, well, this toxic water below us. Uh, and we're pretty close to the shoreline, but you know, 100 feet to swim without a PFD is a big deal. Swimming 500 feet when you do have something to float on, not such a big deal. It is cold, but 50 degrees today, we'd probably be able to get to shore and get some help and not freeze to death. And plenty of help around here, plenty of roads, plenty of people, easy access to get to you. You're not flying remote. So as long as you have some sort of flotation device, preferably a manual flotation device that you can activate once you get out of the aircraft to help you afloat. You don't want to activate it inside the aircraft because you might get stuck if the aircraft gets submerged. But you're probably not making it anywhere to land. You're probably going to be ditching the water if you do have any issues here. If you're uncomfortable with this and you want to go a little higher, different method to all this. You can avoid the Cipher. You can actually go up into the Bravo airspace and get a clearance right from LaGuardia Tower. We'll talk about that in a totally separate video. Red Super Cub at George Washington Bridge, southbound 1100. Yeah, that's pretty cool, actually. If you look underneath, so that it's a double-decker bridge. That's awesome. Do you see the traffic going underneath Wow. also. If you have modern avionics in your aircraft, don't be surprised by the 25 different airspace, terrain, obstacle, and traffic alerts you're going to be getting flying down the river. Up to you whether you think it's safer to either turn off and disable all those alerts before you get down onto the river, or if you want to leave them all on. And here's a quick example of what another aircraft nearby would sound like coming up the river in the opposite direction. River traffic, Long Ranger, Intrepid North Mountain 9. So he's passing the Intrepid at 900 feet northbound on the eastern side of the river. Should be no factor for us. So we've got a lot of other aircraft around us, lots of helicopters, lots of airplanes. Basically, since we have a passenger on board, Steph, she's going to keep her eye out. Please do keep your eyes out. And let me know if you see any other aircraft. Obviously, we see lots of them. Don't point them out to me unless they're getting close to us or I'm getting close to them. If you just see other airplanes, you're going to see lots of them. No point mentioning it and distracting the pilot. But if you see anything that's remotely on a collision course, you're not quite sure, please do mention it. Sounds good. You got one at 11 o'clock. Yep. Got him in sight. He's crossing over the river. Should be no factor. All right, next to our reporting point is the Intrepid we're looking for. That is parked in the docks here on the eastern side, right next to the city. That is the large aircraft carrier. It'll be easy to spot. And these helicopters are like bees. They are everywhere. And of course, you can always make more position reports if you think something is quite wrong here. You could always say two miles north of the Intrepid if you feel like you're on a collision course with someone. So if you feel like somebody else doesn't necessarily see you and you want to make an additional position report, totally fine. There's the six mandatory points. 
and then there's, well, anytime you feel uncomfortable, you can go ahead and make one. Also, be aware, helicopters do produce wake turbulence, and we are flying in the wake turbulence right now, and the helicopter in front of us is cruising along at 1,100 feet also, and it's going to feel just like this, you know, the airplane rocking side to side. If you climb a little bit higher, you should get out of the wake turbulence or step side to side. Wake turbulence on a helicopter is identical to that of an aircraft when a helicopter is in a forward flight. Red Super Cub, Intrepid, southbound 1,100. Traffic Long Ranger, Holland Tunnel, southbound 9. Other thing to mention here, really good idea to bring a hat, sunglasses, and this iPad here is serving as a great visor for me to keep the sun out of my eyes. If the sun was in my eyes, chance of me seeing half of this traffic severely reduced. So, uh, really good idea to have something to protect your eyes and make sure you can see everything. And some of these buildings too can also kind of disappear in the sun because they all are, all are shiny with glass and all that. So really keep a close eye out. Make sure you're staying over the river. Make sure you're keeping up your situational awareness. Do not be taking pictures if you are the pilot. This is a place where the pilot flies and the passengers get to take some pictures for you. Red Super Cub, clock southbound, 1,100. Hey, you got a 407 south of coverage, 500 for statue. Long Ranger Bridge is 700 versus course turn southbound, 500 for Bidabong. All right, so circling the Statue of Liberty is going to be at the highest altitude practical below 1,000 feet MSL. Red Super Cub, Statue, 900. Direction. We're going to get some beautiful pictures here. Red Super Cub, Statue of Liberty, uh, circling 900. And occasionally I'm going to go ahead and roll out of this turn here because I want to pick up that wing, check for traffic, roll right back in. Keeping a sharp eye out here, circling about 900, 950 feet. We'll keep making radio calls every minute or so. Long Ranger on station in front of Lady 400 clockwise. Got the super coming tight. After making a few laps around the statue and getting some awesome pictures, we decided to escape the hornet's nest of helicopters and keep heading southbound. Red Super Cub, Statue of Liberty, southbound 1100. Long Ranger, north, the backside, Lady Southwest, bound back towards north. South, and we're south, looking for you. All right, so we're climbing back up here, 1,100. We are heading southbound. We're going to go fly over VZ. VZ is the Varanazo Bridge. Um, so, yeah, we're just going to call it VZ. That's a way easier name. Uh, Doing good back there, baby? I'm OK. You got 1 o'clock coming your way. Lift slightly low. Helicopter. Cool. Pass below us. Flight Ranger south of Statue, 400 south of Soundback, first turn. Yeah, he kind of disappears in the sun there. Got him passing underneath. And don't feel like going all the way down here. We're going to go ahead and check. We're clear. We're going to start making that turn northbound here. Red Super Cub, mile north VZ Bridge. Northbound, 1,100. Downtown, 80 Zulu Alpha, clock inbound for tours. And I'm going to make this turn steep because I don't want to stay banked with that wing down for too long. Luckily, we got a nice plexiglass roof here. We get to see out of it. There we are. Start rolling out. And it's time to start cruising north. Now, it's not a bad idea when you are reversing course on the river to probably make a little bit more of a radio call than just the specific waypoint you're passing, what direction and your altitude and the type of aircraft and all that standard information. So you might say something more like, hey, Red Super Cub, two miles north of the VZ bridge, change in course, change in direction, reversing course, whatever you want to say, and proceeding northbound up the river. Something that's going to indicate to people, hey, I'm making a U-turn, I'm turning here. And of course, don't stay with your wing down too long. Don't create a blind spot for yourself. Be very where when you're turning people are expect you to be proceeding straight south straight north and if you are going to make a u-turn like that keep your eyes out and make sure you're letting other people know that you're about to do that giving them a heads up so they can keep an eye out for you that's probably going to be the prime time to run into something or the other time to run into something would probably be when you're just not paying attention trying to take a picture or something when you should be looking out the window instead so that's really the bulk of it. Of course, that's all going southbound along the river. Going northbound, same exact thing. You find those required reporting points. You call them out. You announce your aircraft type, your position, your heading, and your altitude, right? So it's going to be something like Red Super Cub, George Washington Bridge, southbound 1,100, 1,200, 1,000 feet, whatever it is. Now, a couple little side notes in there. You can announce more than just the required reporting points. You can find more reporting points on the TAC chart, also just from local tribal knowledge or from local knowledge of what other guys are announcing, like Holland Bridge, Governor's Island, things like that. You can also, of course, if you feel the need to, make more announcements. Say you're a mile south of the USS Intrepid. You don't have to wait an extra 30, 45 seconds for yourself to get there, you can make an extra report. Hey, I'm just one mile south of the USS Intrepid, northbound 1,100. 
whatever it might be. So communicate amongst yourselves. The whole idea is just for the pilots to talk to each other and not run into each other. That's really the whole idea here. And of course, remain clear of the Bravo airspace unless you're going to talk to the tower or approach or whoever and get clearance into the Bravo. So a couple other side notes to mention here. Things like don't exceed 140 knots indicated airspeed. Make sure you have your anti-collision lights on, strobe lights, landing lights, nav lights. Turn on all of your lights on your aircraft unless it's going to cause a hazard to someone. More lights, the better for the most part, right? Try to draw attention to yourself. Always keep your head on a swivel in there. Use your passengers to help you look for traffic. And although it's one of those places where you really want to take pictures and your passengers really want to take pictures, Never take pictures as a pilot. Let the passengers take care of that for you and try to mitigate that as well so that they can keep their eyes outside the airplane looking for traffic. It's great to fly down the river. And if you are just transiting down the river, say north to south, if you're not stopping anywhere, if you don't intend to fly over anywhere, change direction, anything like that, they really request that you stay between 1,000 and 1,300, right? So there's this note here on the kneeboard little chart that we have from the FAA safety team that says, hey, if you're going to be just transiting the area, you're not stopping anywhere, and you're not going to be changing direction or hovering over anything, then please stay between 1,300 in 1,000 feet. If you are going to be landing in any of these heliports or you're going to be, you know, changing direction up and down the river, whatever, then okay, you're not considered transient traffic, you're considered local traffic, and yeah, okay, you can be operating below 1,000 feet. The whole entire route is super busy. Probably the busiest area is the Statue of Liberty, but honestly, the whole entire river is super, super busy. So keep your eyes outside. If you want to fly around the East River, that's a little bit beyond the purview of this video. Just realize that you will have to talk to ATC at that point. You're going to need to talk to LaGuardia Tower or possibly Newark Tower, depending on where you're at. Get a hold of somebody, get a squawk code, get tagged up, probably get a clearance into the Bravo. And you know, it's ATC. They're there to be your friend. These aren't the main tower frequencies they're using to land all the big airliners at. This is a separate guy in the tower on a different frequency. You're going to be talking to him when you use these frequencies that are on this chart here from the FAA safety team. So yeah, feel free to ask for what you need. Hey, I want to do this, this, this. I want to go to Empire, you know, over Manhattan, and then I want to go to the East River. Hey, I want to fly over Central Park first from the Hudson River and then down the East River and then back up to the Hudson River. Sure, whatever you want. Tell them what you want. Tell them what else you want to do that. They'll coordinate with you and they'll do whatever they can to accommodate your requests. Last thing, definitely have the kneeboard supplement from the FAA safety team printed out, not just on your iPad, but have it printed out, hard copy, really great document, lots of helpful information, required reporting points, frequencies, all that sort of stuff can be found on there. Also make sure you have a New York TAC terminal area chart or helicopter route chart available on the airplane to also reference, has a lot of reporting points, a lot of great information on there as well. So you can have that on your iPad or a paper chart. It's always handy to have that backup as a paper chart. And that's really it for this video. So. Hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions on this at all, of course, leave it in the comments below. Lots of flight schools in the area, lots of CFIs in the area that can tell you how to do this. It's really quite simple to follow the rules and make it pretty smooth going there, either daytime or nighttime. And nighttime is super beautiful. Highly recommend you take that opportunity. Don't forget your safety gear. Although it may not be required, highly recommend some flotation devices and uh, warm clothes because that is some cold, dirty, nasty water and there's not a lot of places to land if you do have any problems, especially in a fixed wing aircraft. So that's about it, guys. You know what to do. If you can't fly every day, fly at MikeAlpha.com. We will see you all in the next one. Hopefully, we'll see you flying down the Hudson River.